Hello boys and girls, I hope you're doing very well today. Today is December 1st, 2020. We're finally in December, the last month of the year, and we're on our last two letters of the alphabet. We've covered all of them, we know how to read, write them, we know their sounds, and we're ready to work on those last two so we can move on to much bigger things. Are you ready to get started? Okay, let's do it. The first thing we need to do is talk about those letters that we are focusing on this week so that we can practice writing them. You should have heard about them yesterday, either from Miss Guion in the video before or from your own teacher. So let's take a look. You should know these letters already. We have this one. What is this letter? That's the letter Y. Correct. Y. What does Y say? Y says Y. Say that with me. Y says Y. Remember, we don't add an extra sound on to the end of those sounds, right? We don't say Y says Y. Yeah. No, we don't add that uh at the end of the of the letter sound, okay? So Y says Y. Yeah. Good. This is our other letter. What is it? Q. Q, right? What does Q say? Q says qua. Say that with me. Q says qua. Good job. All right, those are our two letters, Y and Q. So let's get to work on writing those letters. You're, need, you're going to need your dry erase board and marker, but don't get it out. I mean, don't open your marker just yet. Watch me first, okay? We're going to start with the letter Y, the uppercase letter Y, okay? Let's start with that. We have two steps in this letter, and they're both straight lines. It's pretty easy. So watch me first, and then you can work on it, on, on it with me, okay? So we're going to start at the top line, and we're going to make a diagonal line down to the dotted line, okay? And we always start from the what? From the top. That's right. Always start our letters from the top. Starting from the top, we're going to make a diagonal line down to the dotted line, just like that. Then we're going to go back to the top over here to the right of the one we already did. And we're going to make a straight line, a diagonal line down the opposite way all the way down to the bottom line, okay? Like this. That's the letter Y. Uppercase Y. So try it with me, boys and girls. Ready? Starting at the top. Diagonal line to the dotted line. Go back to the top. And a diagonal line all the way down to the bottom line. Try it again. Two steps. One two. Let's do one last one. One, two. Uppercase Y, pretty easy, right? Lowercase Y is the same thing, the same thing, but we do it below the bottom line, the dotted line, and it hangs down below the bottom line, okay? So we're going to start at the dotted line this time and make a diagonal down. Oops, that's a little bit messy. Fix that. Make a diagonal line down to the bottom line. Then we go back to the dotted line and make a diagonal line down past the bottom line. It's one of those hanging letters, so try that with me. Two steps. One, two. One, two. One, two. Great job. This one's kind of short. Let's make it a little bit longer. There. Uppercase and lowercase y. Pretty easy, right? All right, I think you're ready to move on. Let's work on Q. Uppercase Q is pretty easy as well. Let me show you that first, okay? So put the cap on your marker and just watch me, okay? Uppercase Q, you're gonna start and you're gonna make an O. You know how to make an O, right? Start at the top line, go down and around and bump the bottom line and back up to where you started. And then, so he doesn't fall over, you're going to give him a leg. Like that. Easy, right? It's just an O with a leg. Q. Try it with me. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, you've got this. Okay, let's work on lowercase q. It's a little bit different. 
It's got a little tail, doesn't it? I'll show you how to do it. So put the cap on your marker and watch me first, okay? We're gonna start, this is a short, well, it's a, it's a short letter. It stays below the dotted line, okay? But it does hang down below the bottom line. So we're gonna start and it's like we're making a lowercase a. Everybody knows how to make a lowercase a, right? So watch me. Just like we're making a lowercase a, we're gonna start at the dotted line, come around and back up. Then we're not picking up our marker. We're gonna go back down and give it a hook that way, the opposite way of the G, right? So when we make a G, we do the same thing, but we go this way. But with a Q, the tail goes the other way. So starting out, like you're making an A, a lowercase a, and then the tail goes to the right. Okay, you wanna try that with me? All right, let's do it. Like you're making an A, and the tail goes to the right. Just like a lowercase a, and the tail goes to the right. One more. That's lowercase q. It's kind of a funny looking letter, isn't it? All right, that's it. I think you're ready to start doing these letters, right? Right? You're ready to start writing them and using them in words. I think we're ready to put them into our stack of letters that we know, which means our stacks are full. We have all the letters of the alphabet. Before we do that, let's remind ourselves of these of the sounds that these letters make, okay? Y. What does Y say? Y. Yeah, that's right. Y says Y. Yeah. Say it with me one more time. Y says Y. Yeah. Good job. And Q? Q says Qu. Say it with me. Q says Qu. Okay, we're ready to add these to our, our stacks of letters. Today we're working on lowercase because yesterday we did uppercase. So, let's get to work. Are you ready? Well, oh wait, we've got to tap out words first, don't we? When we start phonics, we always start with tapping out words. Okay, so here we go. Ready? Sitting up tall, focused, Ready to learn? You're giving me all your attention, right? Make sure you're tapping out those words, counting the sounds, and doing and following along with me. The first word is quest. What's the word? Quest. Fingers up. Qu. E. S. T. Quest. How many sounds? Four sounds. Qu. E. S. T. Arms a bit with me. Qu. E -st. Quest. Good job. The next word is yam. What's the word? Yam. Fingers up. Y. A. M. Yam. How many sounds? Three sounds. Y. A. M. Arms with it. Y. A. M. Yam. Good job. The next word is fig. What's the word? Fig. Fingers up. Fig. Fig. How many sounds? Three sounds. Fig. Arms with it. Fig. Fig. Good job. The next word is set. What's the word? Set. Fingers up. Set. Set. How many sounds? Three sounds. Set. Arms with it. Set. Set. Okay, the last word is bike. What's the word? Bike. Fingers up. B. I. K. Bike. How many sounds? Three sounds. B. I. K. Arms sweep it with me. B. I. K. Bike. Great job. You're doing awesome. Okay. Now it's time for these letter cards, okay? And once again, sitting up tall, focused, ready to learn. Your eyes must be on the card so you can tell me its name and sound, okay? Here we go. Let me fix this a little bit. All right. Here we go. M says M. Mm. Y says Y. Oops, I think these are upside down. L says O. J 
says j. K says k. I says i or i. X says x. Z says z. V says v. B says b. H says h. E says e or e. G says g. T says t. Q says qu. C says k. F says W says w. O says a or o. P says p. A says a or a. D says d. S says s. U says a or u. R says r, and N says m. Mm. That's it. That's all the letters in the alphabet. We know them all. Great job. Okay, it's time for me to introduce you to our new sight words of the week. Are you ready? This one's easy. Do you know what this word is? If you don't, this one you can stand out. Let's see. Ah, uh, m. Mm. On. This is the word on. Like, my computer is on. Or, please turn on the light. On. Okay, here's the next one. Does anybody know this word? This is the word fine. Even though there's not a long, a uh, bossy e at the end of the word, it still has a long i. Okay? Find. 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 Like, please find my new pencil. Okay, fine. Let's add those to our stack. Our growing stack of sight words. All right. Stick those in there. Mix them up. Are you ready? Okay, sit up tall looking at these cards. Even if you don't know the word or you've just forgotten, say it after I say it, okay? And look at the word so it sticks in your brain, okay? Here we go. C, where, what, I, many, two, on, sorry, of, so, how, is, are, come, the, a, you, we, me, now, but, and like my find with and can. That's all of them. That's a lot of words, right? And if you can read them quickly and write them quickly, you know how to spell them as well, you'll be able to read lots of sentences, then you'll be able to write a lot of sentences. So work hard on memorizing all of these sight words, okay? All right, it's time to blend some words on the whiteboard, so give me one second, and I'll get that set up, and I'll meet you there. All right, are we ready to read these words? We're ready. Okay, so there's something I need to tell you about the letter Q. When we have the letter Q in any word, it's always stuck with another letter. There it is. That letter is U. But together, they still just make the qua sound. 
but the queue can't make the quest sound without the U. Okay? So if you're ever using the queue in a word, it needs to be stuck like glue with you. Okay? So we say Q and U are stuck like glue. Okay? Always keep the Q and the U together. All right? But it still just makes the qu sound. Okay? Those two letters together say qu. Ready? All right. Here we go. You know the drill. Qu. Uh oh. What is this one? Bossy E. So there's our vowel. What does that mean? Long vowel sound, right? The E tells the O to say its name. Okay. Qua. Oh. Quote. Good job. Oh, this is an easy one. Ready? Er. Ah. Uh, rod. Good job. D. I. Mm. Dim. Nice work. G. Ah. O. Gal. Good job. Okay. It's your turn. I'll tell you to think. I'll show you how to uh, so, uh, blend the letters when I run my finger under the word. Then we read it, okay? So, as I'm showing you the letters and what you need to blend together, you should be saying those sounds in your head. Ready? Think. Quote. Good job. Rod. Nice work. Think. Dim. Good. Think. Gal. Nice job. Okay. We know all these words, so let's read them nice and quick. Ready? Here we go. Quote. Rod. Dim. Gal. Good job. Okay, let's put some of them in a sentence. Are you ready? That's a sight word, isn't it? What's that word? The. Good. We've already read this word. G. A. O. Gal. The. Gal. This is not a sight word yet, but it will be soon. So let me show it to you. The A does not make the A or the A sound. It makes a uh sound in this word. That's why we just need to memorize this one as a sight word because the sounds are kind of funny. And the S does not make an S sound, it makes a Z sound, okay? So it says, was, was. It looks like was, right? It's not, it's the word was, kind of like is and has, right? We have that Z at the end, but it's actually an S. That's the way was is spelled too, okay? The gal was, okay, let's sound this one out. It hit. The gal was hit. That's a sight word. What is it? With. With. Another sight word. A. Good. We already read that word right here. Sound it out. Er. Ah. D. Rod. Oh my goodness. The gal was hit with a rod. Exclamation point, right? Means I have to read it with some excitement, right? The gal was hit with a rod. Okay, let's read a little bit slower. Let's read it with me. Ready? The gal was hit with a rod. The gal was hit with a rod. Okay, let's sweep the sentence so we don't sound like robots. Are you ready? The gal was hit with a rod. The gal was hit with a rod. The gal was hit with a rod. Now with some emphasis, right? Okay. The gal was hit with a rod. The gal was hit with a rod. Good reading. Great job. I liked how you put feeling into your reading. You made it sound like somebody was really reading it, not a robot. We see the exclamation point, so we know we've got to add some excitement to that sentence, right? Great job. 
Okay, let's, let's go get to work in our phonics journals, writing some words, get those out, and I'll meet you there. Okay, boys and girls, let's get to work on writing some words using the Q and Y that we learned this week, okay? The first word up here on the top line is the word quack, and I'm going to help you spell this one, okay? The first sound is qua. What letter is that? Yes, Q, but not just Q, right? Q and U are stuck like glue. Q, U. And we hear ah. And at the end of the word, we hear the k sound. And remember, at the end of a word, when we hear k, most of the time, it's both C and K. C first, and then K. Let's sound it out together. Qua, ah, quack. Good job. Below the word quack, here we go. First sound is t, t. Good, letter T. Then ah. O and P. P. Good. Let's sound this one out together. Ready? T. A. P. Top. Good job. Make sure when you're writing your letters, you're starting from the top. Good job. The next word begins with the sound B. B. What letter? B. That's right. B. The next sound is E. That's an E and G. G. Okay, let's sound it out. Here we go. B. Egg. Beg. Good work. Okay, we're going to the next column up here at the top, all the way to the left of our line. Remember, we don't start in the middle or at the end of the lines because we need to have enough room for our work, right? We don't want to run out. Here we go, all the way to the left. The first sound is R. Good, R. The next sound is uh. That's U. And the last sound is mmm. And very good. Let's sound it out. R, uh, mmm. Run. Good job. Below the word run, the first sound is o. What letter? L. Oops, let's fix that. It should be straight, right? Straight from top to bottom. O. The next sound is ah. Good. And the last sound is b. That's a b again. Good job. Let's sound it out. O. Ab. Lab. Nice work. Below the word lab, the first sound is what letter? Yep, Z. Good job. The next sound is I. I, of course. Good job. And the last sound is P. P. Good job. Okay, let's sound it out. Z I P Zip. Nice work. Okay, let's make a sentence using some of these words. Are you ready? The sentence is going to say, we can run to the top. We can run to the top. Six words, okay? We're going to start all the way at the left of our line for our sentence. Starting our letters from the top, the first word is the word we. But what do we always start our sentence with? What type of letter? Uppercase, that's right, or capital, right? Uppercase and capital mean the same thing. So we're going to use an uppercase letter when we start our sentence. We're starting our sentence with the word we. What's the first letter? W. So we need an uppercase. W. W. E. That's a sight word, so we should know how to spell it, right? We. Finger space after we. So put your finger down. And on the other side of your finger, we're going to write the word can. It's not a sight word yet, but it will be. But it's one we can sound out. So let's write as we sound it out, okay? <laughs> ah. Mm. Can. We can, finger space after can, run. Oh, and we already wrote the word run, but 
let's sound it out as we write it again, okay? So finger space here. After the finger space, let's sound out the word run and write it as we go. Uh, uh, mm. We can run, finger space after run, the next word is two. That's a sight word and we should know how to spell it. T O. Two. We can run two, finger space after two, on the other side of your finger. We're going to write the word the. That's a sight word, one that you should really know well by now because we use it all the time. How do we spell the? T H E. Good job. We can run to the top. We already wrote the word top right here. So let's put a finger space and then on the other side of our finger, we're gonna write the word top and we're gonna sound it out as we write. Here we go. T. We can run to the top. Are we done with our sentence? No, what do we need? We need an ending mark. And a period will do just fine here. It's not asking a question. It's not super exciting, so we don't need an exclamation point. So a period. We can run to the top. Let's count our words. One, two, three, four, five, six words, just like we said. Great job. Oh, I forgot to mention, you need to write your date. If you haven't already done that, go ahead and do that now. But our date is 12. Oops, 12. Dash one dash twenty twenty because we're in December now and December is the twelfth month of the year and it's the first day. Twelve dash one dash twenty twenty. Great job, you did an awesome job writing some words, writing a sentence, doing all the things we know we need to do in a sentence. Great work. Let's go and read a book. All right, boys and girls, you did so good with phonics today, and I'm really excited to read you this new book. This week in Journeys, we're talking all about animals, and our essential question for the week is, how do animals use their different body parts? So some animals have very different body parts than we do, right? Some have wings, some have antlers. That It makes them very different, but all of their body parts are very essential to the way they live, right? So we're going to talk about some of those things in this new book called A Zebra's World. This book is by Caroline, Ar Caroline Arnold, and it's all about zebras. Here's the title page, right? A Zebra's World, written and illustrated by Caroline Arnold. So she wrote the words and she, did, she drew the pictures. Okay, it says, there are three kinds of zebras. The zebras in this book are plains zebras. Where plains zebras live? Africa. Habitat, open plains and grassy woodlands. Food, grass and low growing plants. Height, four feet. Weight, up to 550 pounds. Animal class, mammals. Remember we talked about what mammals are? Scientific name, Equis vercelli. A baby zebra is called a foal. Follow a zebra, a zebra foal as she grows up in Africa and learn about a zebra's world. The sun rises over the African plain. Zebras wake up and sniff the fresh morning air. There is a new member of the herd. She is just a few hours old. Soon, the baby zebra and her mother will, re will join the rest of the herd in their daily search for fresh green grass. A newborn zebra weighs between 60 and 70 pounds and is about three feet tall. It's pretty big for a baby, right? The baby zebra bends her knees and struggles to stand. She takes a few wobbly steps. Soon, she gets her balance. Now the young zebra can see the other zebras in the herd. They are looking for something to eat. A newborn zebra is able to stand within 20 minutes of birth. Could you stand 20 minutes after you were born? No, it takes, a, it takes humans a lot longer to stand and walk, right? 
The young zebra is hungry too. She nestles her she nestles under her mother's warm belly and drinks some milk. The mother zebra keeps her baby close. She will not let any other zebras come near until the baby is a few days old. Zebras share the African plains with giraffes, elephants, and many other animals. Some of the other females in the herd have babies too. Each mother knows her own baby by its smell and the pattern of its stripes. The leader of the herd is a full-grown male zebra. He protects the herd. He makes sure that no one wanders too far. He chases away other zebras that are not in his herd. Plain zebras usually live in family herds of 5 to 20 animals. Each herd has one adult male plus several females and their foals. The young zebra is now three weeks old. She eats grass for the first time. She bites off the blades with sharp front teeth. Once a day, the young zebra and her mother follow the herd to a water hole. The thirsty zebras lap up the cool water. While some drink, others keep an eye out for danger. A full-grown zebra can eat up to 20 pounds of food a day. It's a lot of food. Nearby, something rustles in a patch of tall grass. It's a lion. Qua, 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 calls out one of the zebras. Danger is near. The zebras take off across the plain. The young zebra gallops fast to keep up. Her hooves pound the hard ground. As the herd flees, the zebras call to one another. They make sure that no one gets left behind. Day and night, zebras must look out for lions, wild dogs, cheetahs, and other meat eaters. Zebras can outrun most predators. The young zebra is now four months old. She plays with the other young zebras in the herd. The zebras push and shove one another. They race across the plain. When they get tired, they lay down to rest. Exercise helps a young, ze helps a young zebra's muscles grow strong. Same for you and me, right? Exercise helps us grow strong. The young zebras were born in the rainy season. Now the rain has stopped. Water holes are drying up. It's time for the zebras to go to the river to find more water. The zebras walk for many miles. Many family herds come together to form one giant herd. They see other thirsty animals at the river too. In most parts of Africa, the rainy season is during the spring and summer months near the equator. There are two short rainy seasons each year. Some of the other animals they see at the river, an elephant, some wildebeest. The zebras stay near the river until the rainy season comes again. Then the herds head back to the open plain to feast on new green grass. The young zebra is now a year old. She is able to take care of herself. Soon her mother will have a new baby. Then there will be another young zebra ready to run with the herd. So that's the end of the story, but here's some more information. It says, where do zebras live? Zebras live in Africa. The plains of zebras live on open plains and in grassy woodlands throughout East Africa. They are the most common kind of zebra. Rebbe zebras live in dry, semi-desert areas of northern Kenya, Somalia, Ethiopia, and Sudan. Mountain zebras live in South Africa. The light green parts of the map show where, ze where zebras live. So all of this area here, this light green, shows where the zebras live. It says, Zebra Fun Fact. White with stripes. Most scientists agree that zebras are white animals with black or brown stripes. Original stripes. Zebra stripes are like fingerprints. No two zebras are exactly alike. They can be used to tell one zebra from another. Fast runners. A zebra can gallop at speeds of more than 40 miles per hour. Zebras can run long distances without tiring or slowing down. Strong teeth. A zebra has strong teeth for cutting and crushing grass. The molars, or chewing teeth, grow throughout a zebra's life. Sharp eyes. A zebra's eyes are set high on the head, even when bending over to eat or drink, a zebra can see out over the plain and look for predators. A zebra's life. Zebras can live to be more than 20 years old. 
Pretty interesting all about zebras, right? Do you know why zebras are striped this way? Do you know what it does? It camouflages them when they're in big groups together, like they live in herds, right? When they're all together, it's difficult for a lion or any other predator to spot one from a from the herd because they all blend in together with those stripes, right? Yeah. That was a great book. It was very informative, right? We learned a lot about plain zebras. I hope you really enjoyed it. So I want you to think now a little bit more about how animals use their different body parts, okay? Maybe compare it to the way we use some of our body parts. We have hands, right? We use them, we hold tools, we hold things, we grab. Can all animals do that? No. So think of other ways that other animals use their body parts, okay? Great job today. I had such fun with you. I can't wait to see you next time. Have a great day. See you next time. Bye.